Hey guys, thanks for turning into my part two. Unfortunately, I had a little snafu with this video and the audio part did not sync with the video, so it looked like I was moving my lips and nothing was coming out. So I kind of had to redo the video, but I didn't want to totally redo it. I wanted my first honest reaction. So sorry if there's nothing going on during the video, but you'll at least be able to hear it. And I have some graphics to put in place of the video. So thanks for tuning back in. Hey guys, well I'm back again. Got my results back from the 23andMe stuff a couple days ago. Went through some of the basic stuff at work because I was just too excited to kind of get into it before I started recording it. Um, but so far, pretty much what I was told at birth when I was adopted is my mom was 18 in the military and French-Canadian. That was it. I uh, learned a couple other things from my adoptive mom tonight that I guess she was going to go be stationed over in Europe. And she has a letter from my mom, birth mom, that she's going to get to me pretty soon. Um, never knew either of those two things before. Sorry about itching my ear. but um, So hopefully I'll be getting those pretty soon, and I'll add it into another video coming up pretty soon. Um, so this is my third video. I'm also recording my cell phone right now as I'm going through this. That way I can put some of that stuff up on the screen and edit this video a little bit. So like I said, my mom was French-Canadian, but I guess that might not be true now. Because according to the... Ancestry composition from 23andMe. 44% um, of me is British and Irish. 29.8% of me is French and German. 3.4% Scandinavian. Um, and it goes to southern, broadly northwestern European is 17%. Italian 2.5. Spanish and Portuguese 0.8%. Broadly southern European is 0.2%. Broadly European is 1.8%. And then I have some Trace Ancestry too, which is Sub Saharan African, which is 0.1%. Ghanaian, Liberian, and Sierra Leone, which is 0.1%. And then Broadly East Asian and Native American, 0.2%. Then Unassigned is 0.1%. So it's kind of interesting how they break this all down in the app here. Um, when I click on the British and Irish, it comes up with a little bit of a history about the British and Irish people and where they're from, what they've done, where my people could have lived. Um, looks like on the map there, the southern part of the United Kingdom is where they're from, it looks like. Um, Greater London, it looks like, is the best match, it says. Ireland is a likely match, but there wasn't enough evidence of recent ancestry. So they weren't really, so it might have been somewhere farther back. Um, there's all different kinds of stuff on here that I can go into to see. You know, even it just has some prehistoric mysteries of the British Isles. Interesting. Kind of just a lot of articles about it. Beauty and style, I mean, okay, whatever. If that works for people. Third cut, okay, it shows some family members. That type of stuff. Huh, interesting. Let me just go through some more of these other ones here while I've got it up. Oh wow, okay, interesting. Sorry if I'm scrolling too fast for you, but this is kind of my ancestry rules. Ooh, I've, if I have European ancestry, I'm probably descended from Charlemagne. Wow, okay. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Let's see what some other one of these do. No, okay, nothing really there. But pretty interesting, huh? French and German and British and Irish. No French Canadian. Well, French is there, but not really French Canadian like I'd expect to see, or as a majority at least. Um, let's see all tested populations. What that does. Tested 216 different populations. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Kind of interesting how it all kind of breaks down. So that's pretty much my ancestry composition. Um, 
Let's see what Ancestry Timeline is. I haven't been in there yet, so let's hopefully it's good. Oh, okay, so it pretty much just says how many generations back people were in these areas. Kind of interesting. Parental inheritance, that's probably what my mom and dad each gave me, so... Not sure what DNA painting is, probably tells us the process. Hmm, okay. Scientific details is probably a scientific mumble jumbo. No, oh, basically just tell us how they do everything. Never already been through all this, so I'm gonna collapse it. Yeah, nothing really interesting there. Explore my ancestry in detail, that's probably the same stuff that we clicked on earlier. What's pretty nice about this is if I click on view all your relatives, it shows me anyone else that's used a 23andMe kit. I'm not gonna do that right now for their privacy. Well I can do it but just not show it. <laughs> Let's see here. <clears throat> Loading relatives. I know I looked at this before, and there's a second cousin that shares like 4% of my DNA that's actually within an hour or two drive from me. Um, and it says her maternal grandfather was born in Burlington, Wisconsin, which is where I was born. So this is probably someone I'm going to be contacted with to try to see, hey, do you remember anything back in 1981 about this? Do you remember my mom at all? Do you remember hearing about this through the family at all? Do you know anyone who would know? Because I'm kind of curious to meet my mom if she wants to meet me and see what's going on and find out more about me, you know? <clears throat> There's one person who's a first cousin on here, but her about me section just seems kind of weird, I guess you could say. I'm not really sure. And some of the notes on here don't really match with me. So it's like, I don't really know. But yeah, anyways, that's the DNA relatives. Start the video back up on my phone now. View my predicted tree. Let's see what family tree says. Oh, okay, it's pretty much second. Yeah, I don't know my parents, so I can't really figure that out, but it's kind of cool that I can show my other relatives and, you know, what, the, where they are and how they're related to me and stuff like that, so. Yeah, that might be something for me to t take a look at later. Um, oh, yeah, I was going to share these images and save them and kind of put them up there when I'm going through this. This to give you some images that you can kind of save. That way you can um, post them on like Instagram or whatever. In fact, I'll probably do that to promote this video. Just because they look kind of cool. You can order a book of your ancestry reports for like 30 bucks or 40 bucks, whatever. I think that would be kind of cool. $39.99 plus shipping and handling. It would be kind of cool to have a whole book about myself, the story of my DNA. Um, let's go over to the next section here, which is health and traits. Um, for these, I had to kind of view a tutorial on. That way, they were saying that these are just traits. It doesn't mean I'm going to get this. It doesn't mean I'm not going to get it. It just means that it's part of my makeup, you know, that type of thing. And not necessarily part of my makeup. It's just there. It's not meant to detect or diagnose any disease. It's not meaning I will get it. It's not meaning I won't get it. It just means that, yeah, it's in my DNA. And I might have a slightly increased risk for it. Um, Age-related macular degeneration. Okay, this says I have a slightly increased risk for that. I have both the variants detected. Once again, it does not diagnose, of course. Okay, many ethnicities get this, mostly European descent, which I pretty much am, so... It's not that biggie. And I do keep track of my keep care of my eyes. Keep track of my eyes and keep care of them and go see the doctor regularly, so I take care of that. Um, okay, nothing really just goes over what macular degeneration is, so 
and hereditary hemocuriosis, blah, 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 whatever that is. Okay, I can absorb too much dietary iron, it means, at times. Interesting. I don't really take iron pills or anything, but I'll just have to remember that if I ever am supposed to when I get older. My health action plan. Let's see what that gives me here. It's customizing it based on my survey answers, my DNA, all that stuff. I have a genetic likelihood of developing type 2 diabetes. Well, I'm pretty good with my weight and health and diet and exercise, so hopefully I haven't, shouldn't have to worry about that. Okay, so I can take a look at that some other time. But yeah, this thing is pretty... After I did my first video, I went and paid for the upgraded membership, I guess you could call it, or upgraded plan that gives me all these health variants. You know, there's an extra 50 or 60 bucks, but I'd rather know about this stuff, especially since I am adopted, than not know and have it come on, you know? I've always, whenever I've done health stuff, it's like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know because I'm adopted. So it's kind of cool that all the stuff on here is... I can get it tested for, you know. Well, it looks like there's a lot not detected, so that's a good thing, you know. Just the two that I mentioned earlier. Unlikely to consume more caffeine, that is definitely true for me. Predisposed to weigh less than average, definitely true. Um, muscle composition, common in elite power athletes, interesting. Hair, little likely little upper back hair that's definitely true I barely have any body hair bald spot likely no bald spot well I kind of got one started but it's not really too bad um, cilantro taste aversion slightly higher odds of like disliking cilantro that's kind of weird because I love cilantro I love Hispanic cooking and all that stuff so earlobe type likely detached no they're still attached so eye color likely brown or hazel yep that's true Fear of heights. Less likely than average to be afraid of heights. That's a weird one for me because I hate ladders, but I, if I go up in a cherry picker, I have no problem at all with that. I can go up there and just be fine. Um, finger length ratio. Flat feet. Freckles. Likely dark hair. Yeah, that's true. You know, a lot of this stuff is pretty much true for me, you know. Um... Wake up time, likely to wake up around 8.23. Yeah, okay, I wish. I'm usually up by 6 a.m. every morning. I wish I could sleep till 8.30. <laughs> um, yeah, if you see there I answered 13, 1,327 questions to be part of genetic research. I want to make sure that if anyone comes after me being adopted, they can get more information too, you know. Um, there's a lot of adoptees out in the world, and they're probably trying to figure out who they are too. So hopefully this will help them a little bit, you know. Alright, well I think that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I might be doing some more updates later on once I get that letter from my mom and find out some more stuff about my family. So I guess I'll catch you guys later. Hope you enjoyed this.